Hello everyone, Charles here. In this video, I'll be showing you how you can convert an existing design into a HTML, CSS, and JavaScript website. So this is the web page that we'll be coming up with. We'll have a navbar right here. And as you can see, it's an e-commerce product page. So we have this gallery right here. I have the image. We can switch between the images just like that and we'll be using vanilla JavaScript for this functionality. Also, when we click an image right here, it will bring this pop-up where we can have a slideshow of the images. So also these will be powered by vanilla JavaScript. So this is a good video for those who want to practice uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, okay? And also if you want to have a refresher of your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript skills. So we'll have this gallery, which is really cool. Uh, another feature that we will implement with JavaScript is this functionality of adding a product cart. So here we have our cart and it will look like this whenever it's empty. And whenever we add uh, some products, we'll have it like this. So we have a cart and we can remove items from cart. And we can add as uh, many uh, items as we want right here. So also this. Uh, will be powered by JavaScript. Also, this particular page will be mobile responsive. So if I hit on uh, inspect there, then click on mobile here, you'll see that it is mobile responsive. And we have a side nav right here. So we'll see how we can create that. We still have our slideshow right here and we can open the cart and also close it we will be making use of Frontend Mentor for the design. So Frontend Mentor is a very nice platform because it gives you free designs and then you can convert them into HTML, CSS and JavaScript website. So if you go to Frontend Mentor, then go to Challenges, you can uh, click on Control F to pop this search and then you can say um, Cut and then you'll see e-commerce product page right here, which is an intermediate project and here you will see in this challenge you'll build a beautiful product page we'll be putting your javascript skills to test uh, with a lightbox product gallery and a cut functionality so this is a very nice project for you to practice vanilla javascript and also html and css so it's free so once you come here you'll just click on this page and then uh, what you'll want to do is to download the uh, starter files, okay? So you'll start the challenge. For me, I already started and you can see they are saying uh, visit challenge hub. So once you start the challenge, you'll come right here and you'll download the starter files, okay? And I'll click on download right there and I'll download these again. So I'll go ahead and save. Now, I'll just come right here and I'll open the location of that particular download and when you get it like this what you want to do is to uh, unzip it so i'll come right here and i'll extract all to this particular location and i'll extract just like that and now you see it right here so i'll no longer need this so i'll go ahead and delete that one permanently and then now we have this so as you can see we have a folder inside um a folder so what i usually like to do is whenever i click right here i'll control x to cut that one go one step backward and i'll paste it right here and what this will do is that it will replace the folder that we have here with whatever we uh, you know pasted and now we only have one folder right there with our resources and now I want to open this with my preferred uh, code editor, which is Visual Studio Code. And I usually like to do it like this. So right here uh, at the path, I'll type CMD, hit enter. And then right here we'll have code space and a period, hit enter. And that will open our code or our folder on Visual Studio Code. And here it is very nice. Now from here, you'll see that we have been provided with the designs of our uh, product page. So we have the desktop design. It should look like this. 
we have the design for the light box gallery it will look like this then uh, we have active states all these designs right here we even have the mobile design right here and so on we also have the different assets that we'll be needing all the images the icons and so on right here and then right here we will have a starter file with some content which we need to include in our page just like that then we have a guide right here a style guide so you'll see that the designs were created for desktop of uh, this size and mobile of this size so for different sizes the design might look differently and we have the colors that we need to use these are the primary colors we have the neutral colors and also we have font size and uh, the font that we should be using together with its font weight so we have everything that we need in this style guide also we have a readme and this is giving you direction on how you can approach the project so you can go through this readme and uh, hopefully it will give you more information on how you can go about uh, completing this project okay so the first thing that I'll do is to run this particular code with live server, okay? So live server is an extension. So just go to an icon that look like this. I know you guys are on the side here. Just look for this particular icon. And if you are using a Visual Studio code, you should look for live server. Okay, this one right here and make sure to install it. So once you install it, you'll be able to do whatever I am doing right here. So you'll click on this, then you will right click and open with live server. And that will open on uh, our browser. And this is how our design looks like at the moment. And you want to convert this into um, this particular design right here. Okay. Okay. Very nice. So let's get started with this and I think we will start with the nav bar and we'll start by adding the HTML for the nav bar. So right here we have the body and inside the body we will have a div and this div um, will have a class of container and then inside the container we will have a header inside the header uh, we'll have a nav and the nav will actually have now a class name of navbar okay a class of navbar i'm used to class name because of working with react so it's class right here of navbar inside the navbar we will have two sections uh, i think i can open the design to be side by side here so i'll go to the desktop design and we'll have this first section where we have the logo and the links and then this other side will just have this profile picture and the cut right there so let's start with this particular section so right here i'll add a section and you can start with the section dot then nav hyphen first and when you hit enter that will create the section tag together with that particular class name so that will be the first one then we'll also have another one so i'll say uh, section then dot nav hyphen second then i hit enter and that will be our second section now for the first section we will also be having our menu icon so if we were on mobile mode we will be having the menu icon uh, i think i can come to mobile design you see we have this menu icon here and then the logo so on mobile mode what we'll be doing we'll be showing this menu icon and hiding the links okay and then on the desktop mode we'll have this as hidden and then we'll have the links so for our html here we will be having that menu icon and the menu icon is available at our images so i'll come to images then i'll come to icon menu this one here and what i'll do i'll copy this svg so i'll select it and copy and i'll paste it directly right here okay 
The reason why I do this is because uh, with SVG it's easier to change its color but if we brought this in as an image then it will be hard to change its color. So for most SVGs I'll be bringing them in just like this okay. So this is for the menu icon and right here I'll add a class of a menu hyphen icon. Okay, very nice and when I save you'll see that it will auto format to this and this is because I am using an extension called Prettier so if you don't know about Prettier you can just search it here you can add this extension I think you need to go to settings and uh, you know set up your code formatter so your settings must be at the bottom here but mine it's at the top here a bit different and if you go to settings all you need to do I think it's to search for a formatter I think yeah called formatter then you'll choose prettier on the drop down that you get there once you install it and uh, uh, you can restart your code editor you can close it and open it again uh, for it to actually uh, start working so that is the extension that formats the code okay and uh, now we have the svg added then after the svg we will have our logo now for the logo we have it as an image okay we also have it as an svg but it is uh, too long it has a lot of stuff and since we are not changing its color or anything I'll add it as an image right here okay and I'll say a div and inside here we'll have the image tag the source will now be images then stroke logo dot svg then we'll have the alt here as a sneakers logo so the alt usually shows whenever our image doesn't show and uh, it's also for accessibility uh, reasons okay so right here we'll give this div a class of logo just like that so after the logo we have the links okay the nav links we'll say dot nav hyphen links hit enter and we'll add the different links right here so whenever we go to the mobile design so let's come to designs then we go to the um mobile menu design so you'll see in this particular design we have this x icon together with the links so what we will do is that again on mobile we'll be showing this icon but on desktop we'll be hiding it and the style for the links will be almost similar only what we'll be doing will be changing the direction of the flow so on mobile they are going downwards on this on desktop they'll be going uh, horizontally now another thing is that you see here we have like a transparent background this is called a backdrop so we'll add this icon for x and also this backdrop right there uh, and then we'll also add the links okay so let's do that now to add the close icon we already have the icon at images just look for icon close and i'll copy that one as an svg and i'll paste it directly right here so that is the close icon and we can give it a class i think so right here we'll give it a class of close hyphen icon okay remember this is inside our nav links and still inside the nav links we'll now have the different links we'll have an a tag for href we'll set it to be hash meaning that it doesn't go anywhere it is just a placeholder okay and then right here i'll say that this is uh, collections just like that we'll also have another a tag with the hash and for this one we'll say that this is main uh, i think i can just duplicate this you can use alt shift bottom arrow to duplicate that will be for women about and contact so here we just change the content and we'll say women here we'll have about and here we'll have the contact just like that uh, and i go ahead and save 
Now for the backdrop, we'll add it outside our nav links. Okay, so outside the nav links, we will add right here another div. And here we'll say that this is uh, a backdrop. So we just need the class to style it. We don't need any content. So I'll just add a class and I'll say uh, backdrop just like that. Okay, very nice. So I hope the structure is clear so far. Uh, we are uh, at our nav bar, then we have a section tag. And for the first section, we have the SVG here, which is our menu icon. And then we have the logo here. Then we have a backdrop. Remember, for this menu icon, for this backdrop, and for this close icon, we will hide them on desktop mode and show them on mobile mode. Then we have uh, the other nav links inside our nav links right here. Very nice. Now we go on to the second section of the nav bar. Right here, I'll just have a div and we'll include the image right here. Um, it is an icon, but I can add it as an image since we are not changing its color or anything. So for the SRC, we'll say it's images uh, stroke icon hyphen cut dot SVG. And then right here, we can say that this is the cut icon and we add a class for it so i'll say a class of cut hyphen icon for this div we'll also add a class of cut let's have a div with a class of avatar so if i say a period and i say avatar and hit enter you'll notice that that creates a div with a class of that avatar and right here i can add the image the source will be images then we'll have the uh, image uh, avatar.png then right here we can have this as avatar for alt oh, very nice so that is our second section and with that i think we can start styling our navbar okay we need to link uh, a css file to this particular page right now we have at the very top we have these style tags which we will not need so i'll go ahead and remove the style tag right there then i will remove the comment right here you can change the title right here if you want but i'll just let it remain and down here is where i will link the uh, style sheet so we'll need the link tag for CSS. If I say link, you will see here we have CSS. And when I click, it automatically adds uh, this particular tag. Ring style stylesheet, href. Now here we specify the source. I like to call it main.css. Okay. Then right here, uh, I'll also say um, media to be screen. This helps with uh, responsiveness and also you can add a type of uh, text stroke css now all we need to do is to add this main.css uh, file right here at the root so click at the root add a new file and just say main.css and there we go now we have our css file for this css file we'll just first do some basic setups and that includes adding the variables for our colors and also importing the font so go to style guide and from style guide you'll notice that at the very bottom we were given a font to use hit control then click that link and that will open on google fonts okay once it opens on google font we have our font here so what I'll do, I'll just say right here, get font. And right here, you'll see we have get embed code. So I'll just click on that. And here you'll see instructions on how you can add using the uh, HTML link and how you can use it in your CSS. And also we have the import right here and how you can import it in a CSS file and how to use it in CSS. So I'll just copy this import right here and uh, that is what you should do as well so i'll copy that and then i'll come back right here and in my css i'll paste it at the very top so i'll select all the tags 
then I'll select all the before and after pseudo selectors. So I'll say after, comma, and all the before, just like that. And I'll open the curly brackets. And what I will do right here is that I will remove the margin for all of them. So I'll set the margin to zero. And I'll also remove the padding for all of them. So padding, we will set that one to zero as well. And then right here, set the box sizing uh, to border box. Okay, we should have included a semicolon right here and there we go so as you can see what we have done we have removed the margin the padding for all the elements so that we can add our own and then for box sizing we set it to border box so this means that something like the padding and the border will not increase the size of the element right here i'll create some variables for the colors so i'll say root this is how we create variables in css and for the colors we can just split the screen like that and cross that side and right here you'll see the colors that we have so we have orange pear orange so we will be adding them just right here so i'll say let's have orange full colon and that will be equal to this color right there which i'll copy and i'll paste right here okay then right here i'll have pear hyphen orange and i'll just copy and paste it as well copy and i will paste it then right here uh, i'll have very uh, hyphen dark hyphen blue full colon and i'll copy that and i will paste it there then right here we'll add 0 0.75 to mean that it's 75 percent of, 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 of opacity okay and uh, there we go so we have now our various uh our css colors are variables okay and i save so right here we brought in our font but we haven't make use of it in our code so this is how we can tell our code to use that font so i'll say html here and we'll set the font a hyphen family and we'll say it's uh, that weird font this one i can copy that i paste it here and we'll have a fallback of sans serif so a fallback is used whenever this font is not available so to see if it is working i think what we can do is to check our font how it looks like right now and uh, once we save the file now it should look different so i save and yeah there is a change in that font so it's working well okay very nice so i want us to focus now on our nav bar here so we will remove text decoration for all the links of the page so right here i think i can now like place the design and the code to be side by side just like this so that we see what we are changing uh, here we'll have an a tag and we'll change the text decoration to be none then right here we will change the color and this is now how we can use our css variable right here we'll just say var and when i hit enter we'll get these suggestions for the colors that we included at our variables. And the color that I want is a dark grayish blue, this one. I hit enter and when I save, look, our links have changed the color to this particular color, which we added using CSS variables, okay? So that is very cool actually. I'll come down here and we will have our a body tag and for the body tag i think what i'll do i'll set the mean height to be 100 vh so that will be the minimum then the mean width to be 100 vw so for those who don't know what this means vh is the viewport height or the height where you can see our website
so we have said the height to be from right here up to the bottom and for width to be from right here up to the end basically the size of the screen where we will be having our website so viewport height viewport width okay we will select our container and we style the container so container so remember the container it's inside our body this one here and what the container will help us to do is to create some spacing for our website okay so let me show you let's go to the design we'll go to the desktop design you will see that our design here it does not touch the walls okay we have like a container surrounding it it does not touch the walls here so we will use that container to create that spacing and to have a maximum width okay and uh, by the way another way that you can use to estimate the size of uh, these designs is by using figma okay so figma it's a tool used for by designers to create these kind of designs and you can use it to actually estimate the size of this stuff and that is what i was using actually to estimate the different sizes so as you can see right here i have figma and uh, you can download it uh, maybe take uh, just a basic tutorial to learn how it is used also this figma is where i use uh, to design the thumbnails for my different youtube uh, tutorials so figma is a very powerful tool when it comes to design and as a front-end developer you should also be having those basic skills to work with figma okay so uh, what i want to show you is that i already have the designs at the bottom here both for desktop okay i don't have for mobile but i have the designs right here and what i did is to drag and drop the image in here in figma when it's actually open and you can see this is our design here and what i did you can create a retro triangle here i click on triangle then i draw right here and when i draw you'll see we have it there and you can come to here where i have fill and you decrease the opacity to about 50 percent or something like that okay or 40 and what that will allow you to do is to see what is on the background and you can use this particular uh, box to estimate the size of the different elements and remember that size will be perfect for a screen with the size of 1440px okay so for other uh, screen sizes it might look different so basically what you need to do is to you know set the uh, the beginning of the sneakers there and you will see the size of this particular nav bar so to the very end there so you'll see it's about 11 or 7 uh, px and using that knowledge you can uh, use it to create a container that will be approximately this size also you can use this to estimate the size of the different uh, elements like the logo here you can estimate its width and also you can estimate its height so if uh, it's too small you can hit control then you can zoom in or i think you can use the plus icon on the keyboard to zoom in and then you'll be able to estimate the size like that also for something like the padding or the margin you can be able to estimate the size of from here to here by dragging it like that and you'll see that the padding for this section is approximately 47 px and right here you can do the same you can approximate this one just like that and uh, if you have an image and you need to create a pixel perfect design then you can use figma to estimate the size and you can see the height here it's this 89 approximately 90 px so if you don't have the sketch files uh figma is always a good tool and that is what i use to estimate most of the sizes that we'll be using in the design i won't keep on coming uh, back here uh, just know that the px that i'm using most of them i estimated them using figma okay that's the point and uh, let's come back right here and work on the container so i'll just cross figma and uh, we come back right here to our main dot css so we need to have a max width for this particular container so i'll set max width and it will be relevant 20 px and as i have told you i estimated this size using figma don't uh, wonder where i got it from okay we will have uh, a mean hyphen height 
of 100 VH. So this will set the width, a maximum width that we cannot get past. Then this will set the uh, minimum height. So basically the height will be the entire of the screen there. Okay, then we will come right here and we'll add some padding. So padding, top and bottom will be zero, but left and right will be about 5px. And I go ahead and save. Okay, so if I expand this, uh, you'll notice that we don't have the spacing right here as expected and uh, it is actually there just not well aligned for example if we add a background color of red and save and then we expand look it is up to this point and not going all the way to the end and what we, we will do is to add a margin of auto. So margin auto will automatically align our container. So look, our margin auto sets the container to be at the very center. So I think this is overflowing because of the text here. Not sure why it's overflowing, but uh, there we go. Our container is at the center. Okay, very nice. So let's come back and we no longer need this background color. For the nav bar, let's select it first. So we'll say nav bar. We will display flex. And what that will do, it will set our links. So dot nav bar. We display flex. And as you can see now, our first nav section and the second nav section are now side by side. We will justify content to be between. So space between, save. And now that is pushed to the very end here. Then we'll also have an array items of center. That will center them uh, vertically. Let's add some padding to the top. This will be 26 px, very nice. Then we'll have a border bottom, and we'll set this to be 1 px. Solid. Then we'll include a color using our variable, which will be a grayish blue, just like that. Now we have that uh, bottom border that we have in our design here. Okay, let's continue here. Then right here, red set margin to the bottom and that will be about 85px. And this one will create the spacing that we have between our nav bar here and this other section here. We have a white space below it. So right here I'll say dot nav hyphen first, then space dot menu hyphen icon and we'll display none and you can see the nav menu here it's now hidden because we have added that and also we will hide the close icon that was available at nav hyphen links then dot close a hyphen icon and here we'll also display none just like that then right here We'll also have dot nav hyphen, I think first, and dot backdrop. And here what we will hide is our backdrop. So by default, the display will be none. Okay. So since this nav first aligns with the first one here, we can move it at the top there. So what I have done, I have selected it, then used alt and then the top arrow. So now we only have whatever we need on our desktop and we can focus now on styling those. So right here now, let's focus on styling now the desktop nav. So dot nav first, then right here, uh, we will say our display will be flex. I save and now you'll see the logo and the links are side by side very nice and then right here we'll align the items to the center then right here we will 
have a gap of 50 px and we'll set a padding to the bottom of about 30 px for the nav links i'll just say dot nav hyphen links i'll add a display of flex i'll align them to the center so align item center and i'll have a gap of 30 px so gap of 30 px and i save now on hover we need to have some effect so dot nav links and then a full column hover and we'll change the color to be our variable and we will specify that this is black and when i hover you'll see now it's black very nice now the other thing is to create that uh, underline and we'll use the after pseudo selector to create it so what we need to do is right here we'll say dot nav links and then right here a full colon hover then full colon after and right here we will add content to be an empty string just like that and then we'll add a position of absolute so that means that uh, somewhere we need to have a position of relative and that will be at our uh, our a tag here so right here let's add nav links again then we select a and what we'll do here is to add a position of relative so this after will be absolute to this a right here okay so relative and absolute uh, works together whenever you use absolute know that you need to have somewhere as relative and that is the parent element so the parent element of our after pseudo selector will be the a tag so right here we set a background color and that will be the orange color so use the variable hyphen hyphen orange and we save that so if i hover we don't see it but uh, that is because it doesn't have a height and a width so let's set a width and we'll set this to be a hundred percent so this will be a hundred percent of the parent the parent is the a tag so it will occupy the width of the parent and then right here we we'll have a height of 3 px so if i save and hover look we have for each of them we have that underline at the top there and now all we need to do is to position it correctly so right here i'll say left let it be zero and that is a huge change because now it's at the top of each of them then we show it at the bottom right here so to show it at the bottom we need to say bottom and I'll say a negative 47 px and when I save look it's now at the bottom there so it is not perfectly aligned with our border here because of this image it's too big so once we fix this section it will be nicely aligned with our border and I measured these widths and so on using again uh, using Figma so on to our second nav uh, section so right here i'll say dot nav uh, hyphen uh, second and right here we will display flex and uh, let's go ahead and we align the items to the center also let's be good citizens and add a gap of 45 px we need a padding bottom and we will set the padding bottom to be that px uh, we target our image here because it's the one that is making this section to look awkward so far so right here so i'll say dot avatar img and we'll give it a, a height of uh, 50 px then right here we'll have a width and we'll say 50px as well 
so that is our logo right there very nice and now when i hover here look our yellow uh hover effect is perfectly at our line another thing i'll resize the logo here to be perfect so i'll just say dot logo then img and i'll set the height to be 22 px and i save okay very nice now another thing that i can do is to comment out this section right here first of all uh, i think i can remove this section up to contact because we added that those were our links then um for attribution here i will remove that section okay didn't i remove it and then for this section uh, use control forward slash to comment it out and save and now you'll see we don't have overflows uh, next uh, i think we can make it to be mobile responsive we can create the side nav uh, so now we can make this nav bar to be mobile responsive uh, so that on mobile we have the side menu and not this one so the first thing that we should do is to add a breakpoint. So here, I'll add a comment, control forward slash, and I'll say mobile. I'll use at media query. So I'll say uh, at media, uh, and then I'll invoke it, and I'll pass a max hyphen width, and I'll set this one to be 755px. So when the width of the screen is less than this, we will apply the styles that we will add below here and we can test it so right here we can for example say body and we say the background color of the body will be red and i save so when the screen size or the the browser window is less than these 755 then the background color will change to red so let's see if that works so i'll inspect and look it's already red and when we are below 7 750 it's red above that it's white so what does that mean again it means that whenever we are below this size then the styles that we will be adding here are applied what we will do now is to add the styles for the navbar when we are in mobile mode so first of all we will remove the margin to the bottom and also we will not be having this line on mobile so right here let's select the navbar and we'll say margin a uh, hyphen bottom this one will be zero then we will say border a uh, hyphen bottom and this one will be none i save and if i inspect you'll notice that we don't have that border to the bottom now. Okay, very nice. So right here, I'll say dot nav hyphen first, uh, a comma and a space dot nav uh, hyphen second. Then in here, we will say gap uh, to be 30px and then full colon. And then I'll add padding to the bottom 10px and I save. I'll select the nav menu, which we had hidden before, and we will go ahead and show it. So right here, I'll just say dot nav hyphen first, then dot menu icon. So here I'll say display to be inline block and I save. And now look, we have this nav menu, it's back on mobile, but on desktop when I expand, it is not there. So you can see how we uh, create a, a responsive page okay we make use of the media query we set a breakpoint of where things will start changing and uh, i feel this size is good enough because uh, overall the page will look nice although for mobile design it was created for i think 375px uh, to look perfect on that size but i want uh, for it to look nice all around so i'll also add right here a cursor of pointer Another thing that we will do is to hide these links on mobile. So right here, I'll just say dot nav hyphen links and we will display none. I save 
and now those links are gone so we will style these nav links differently because that nav links will actually be our side nav bar okay and this is how we will do it so right here i'll say dot nav uh, hyphen links and when this is active we will display flex and then we will change the flex uh, hyphen direction to be column so if i save you can already see the list right here position right here will be absolute and as i told you before whenever we set a position of absolute we need to have a parent which will have a position of relative so what i'll do i'll go to the body and i'll give it a position of relative so position here of relative and then this will have a position of absolute i think we can add a background color or a background using val and it will be white so here we'll say top uh, to be zero then left to be negative 5px i save now the reason why i said negative 5px is because our container had a padding of that particular size then right here we'll set a max width of 220px and then we'll say that the width is actually a hundred percent are aligned the items to the start just like that i'll give it a z index of 15 and right here we'll have a padding top and bottom will be 25px then left and right will be 30px and i save a backdrop will be between our nav rings and uh, this background here so what we can do is to style the backdrop as well and that will make it look nice so right here i'll say dot nav first uh, and then we'll have dot backdrop we come right here and we'll set a background and now we'll use the uh, black color which was transparent so variable uh, black with opacity this one okay and i save and nothing happens so we'll give it a width right here of 100 vw we'll also give it a height of 100 uh, vh so it occupies the entire screen then we will display a block uh, just like that and as you can see we are already seeing it at the back there and then we continue with our styles here uh, we will add a position of absolute set the top to be zero and the left to be the same as uh, what we did there which is negative 5px and i save it is back there it's transparent we'll give it a z index of less than 15 here so it can be 14 uh, I think we didn't give this one a height. We can give it a height. So I'll say height of 100 VH so that it goes up the bottom. And there we go. Now look, we have a side menu. We have a backdrop there. And uh, this is coming along. I'll come and say dot nav links uh, dot close icon. And we'll display inline block. Remember we had hidden it. So we'll say inline block to show it. And when I save, we already have that X icon right there. Then right here, uh, we'll give it a margin to the bottom uh, of about 30px. And then we'll say cursor is pointer. And I save. And now we have our X icon. We can target the links and style them better. So right here, I'll say nav hyphen links. And then A. And then right here, I'll have a font weight. Uh, of 700 and then we'll change the color to black and another thing we need to fix the hover effect so when i hover on collections you can see where its line is at so that is not specified on the design but we can easily fix it we can just say dot uh, nav links and then we'll say dot active when nav links are active and then right here i'll say um, a hover after pseudo a selector or element then we'll do something here uh, right here we'll have a bottom of uh, about negative 5px 
so we'll change the position of the after and right now you can see uh, it's, it's still not fixed okay because currently our nav links don't have this active class so what we will be doing with javascript is that at our nav links we will be adding that class okay so i come here and we have our nav bar here we have nav first and we have our nav links right here so with javascript we'll be able to add the active class and whenever that active class is there that is when the position will be perfect and you see it's actually very perfect and another thing all this will show only when we have that active class so at this terms we'll only say nav links dot active so here dot uh, active like that and then right here we'll also have nav links dot active that is when we show this close icon okay so when it's not there we'll not have it so here i'll say dot active just like that and also we'll be adding an active class to the backdrop so right here dot active as well so right here we'll also say only when we have the active that is when these cells will be applied so when i save it's gone and what we'll be doing is that whenever we click on this icon we will target our nav links class and we'll add the active class and when we add the active class to it then our, our side nav will be visible and also we'll be adding an active class to the backdrop with javascript so let's see how we can do that with javascript to open and cross our, our side nav we'll come to the index.html here and we will add a connection to a javascript file we'll come right here and we'll add a script tag just like that for this script tag we will add the source and i'll say main.js and also here i'll add an attribute called differ so when we add differ there what it will do is that it will load our javascript in time so that uh, whenever the page loads uh, the javascript is also ready and we can actually make use of it we will create our main.js file I'll add a new file and I'll say main.js and we will target this particular icon. I'll say const uh, menu icon uh, will be equal to document dot query selector and we invoke it and we pass the class for that particular icon and its class was uh, dot menu hyphen icon. So we get a reference to it right there. Now we will do the same for the backdrop. We'll do the same for the nav links and the close icon. So right here, we'll say this is for backdrop, just like that. Then right here, we will select it like that, backdrop. So that is the class that we gave to our, our backdrop. Then right here, we'll have the nav links. Okay, remember the nav links is also our side nav and we'll be able to select them just like this. So here dot nav hyphen links. Let's come here and select our close icon. And right here we will have close icon. Then we come down here now. So the first thing. Whenever we click this menu icon, which is this one that we are selecting here, we will add an active class to the nav links and also to the backdrop. And then whenever we click the backdrop, we will remove the active class from the nav links and also from the backdrop. And then whenever we click the close icon, we will remove the active class from nav links and also from the backdrop. So here we'll just say menu icon uh, dot add event listener and we will listen to a click event. Okay. And then right here we'll pass an arrow function that will be called whenever we click that menu icon. And once we click this function will run and what we will do in this function we will add the active class. So right here we'll say nav links 
add dot class list dot add and then we invoke that and we pass active so we will add the active class to the class list of the nav links and then right here we'll do the same for the backdrop so dot class list dot add and we add the active class and i save right now believe me or not it should open our side nav whenever we click this one so i click and look it has opened our side nav just like that but whenever we click on x it doesn't close whenever we click on this it doesn't close so now i want us to whenever we click on x and whenever we click on this it will remove this active class so it will be so similar we can just highlight this duplicate it twice just like that and right here i'll say close icon we add an on click event so the click event and then instead of add here we will now remove so i'll say remove and here i'll say remove just like that then for this one we will have the backdrop and uh, we will also remove the classes whenever we click so remove and also right here we will remove i click it's open i click x it's crossed i click it's open i click here it's crossed so we are done with our navbar both on mobile mode and also on desktop mode because on mobile it's that one and on desktop it's that one pretty nice okay so now we'll move on to the next step so we will start with the image gallery okay we'll have this main section here where you have the image gallery and then the text content there for the image gallery for this main image there will be four of them just like we have the thumbnails here these are the thumbnails but we'll only show one at a time depending on which one is active so right now this is the one that is active when we switch to this one then it becomes the active one and so on after this div here section dot main we hit enter uh, we'll create a div and I'll say default. So this is the gallery at default mode and dot gallery and We'll be having this default and we'll be having the one that we call uh, the light box So when we click the main image, we show a pop-up of the slider So in this case, let's just focus on this one first and then we'll figure out how we'll add the other one later on So here we have the default gallery and then right here I can say dot main hyphen img that is a div and below that we'll be having the thumbnail images so i'll say thumb hyphen um, list just like that so we dive into this one here and we'll have the image and right here we'll say images then stroke uh, image product one Okay, so they are one to four. So we go with the one there. Alt will just say this is a product image. We will duplicate this. Alt shift bottom arrow to duplicate it. One, two, three. Then we just change the image. So this will be two. This will be three. This will be four. We'll also have a thumb list right here. We'll have a div for each of them and then for each of them we will basically have the image tag and the SRC will be images again then stroke uh, image thumbnail so image product one thumbnail product image thumbnail just like that so this is the first one like that but we need four of them so one two three four and i come right here we change okay we remove the the last one there uh because when it's there they will they'll actually be five so this one will be two this one will be three this one will be four and we just add those thumbnails like that and by now we have them at our browser so Mm, we should be seeing them yeah they are here so these are the main images 
I don't know why you have so much space in here. So I think what we have done wrong is that we are outside the container. I think this div right here was for the container. Yes, this one. So we should be inside the container still. So right here, we'll take this section, shift, and I remove it to be inside that div. You can see the div have come right here. And uh, I save, and now our HTML markup is fine. By default, we'll be having this main image, the first one as the active one, and also for the thumbnails, by default, we'll be having this one right here as the active one. So let's come back here. We go to the first main image, and we will add a class of active. So for this one, we'll just say active. And then we go to the thumbnails, thumb list. And for this first div, we'll add a class of active. So here, I'll add a class of active, just like that. And I save. Very nice. Now we just need to jump to CSS. I'll do it before our at media query. So before we go to mobile here, we do it here. And here, I'll say that this is the image uh, gallery. We'll target the, uh, okay, we'll start with the main. So for main, it's a kind of general. So let's come here and also say main. And right here, we go ahead and say dot uh, main. And here we'll say display um, flex. Then we'll have a gap of 125px. So for this main, we are separating this section here with this section here. And uh, I have just realized that we didn't add the other section yet. So I'll just add the parent tag. So after this gallery, just right here, I'll come and add a div and we'll give it a class of content. Okay, maybe I can just add the heading alone. So here I'll add a H3 and the heading will be sneakers, sneakers company. So we have two headings, this sneaker company and this one here. So let's just add one, this one, uh, so that we just have the content for that section, a little bit of it and see uh, the different sections clearly. So right here, for the main tag now here, we display flex, so that is this section and this section. Uh, we add a gap between them, this gap of 125px. And right here, I'll set a mean height for this particular section. About 570px will do. And we proceed. We will align the items to the center. And we'll have a padding. Top and bottom will be 0. Left and right will be 50px. So for the gallery here, we'll say dot uh, gallery. We'll flex 1. Let's add another uh, comment of content now when i say content i mean the text content and when i say dot content and right here i'll say flex of one as well so what this means is that they'll both occupy equal spacing okay when we do it like that now we come back to the gallery we'll display flex i'll add a flex direction of quorum and i want a space between them of 30px so i'll add a gap of 30px so that 30px is the space that we have right here between the thumbnails and the main image so we do it like that we'll start by hiding the main images so i'll say gallery and then dot main hyphen img and then img and we'll display none that will select these main images that will hide all of them we can confirm by checking and as you can see all the main images are gone but we'll show only the one that we added an active class for okay so right here i'll say dot gallery and then we'll have dot main image again then we'll have img dot active and then we'll display inline block so the one that we have an active class only is the one that now shows so as you can see we now have one main image 
right here and that is because this is the one that we added this class active to so we'll give it a max a hyphen width of 445px and i think it's a square image so i'll also give it a max hyphen height of 445px i'll set a width of 100 percent height will also be 100 percent border radius and we'll say 20px then this main image is clickable so we'll set the cursor to be pointer and once we check now our main image don't have sharp corners anymore so now i'll style the thumb list down here and i'll say dot gallery and then dot thumb hyphen list we will display frex so we want the uh, thumb nail images these ones here to be side by side we want them to be aligned right here horizontally and we don't want to hide any of them so all of them will be visible as we have at our design here all of them are visible so here uh, the display will be flex and we won't change the flex direction because by default flex direction is row then we'll justify the content to be space between and then we'll give it a max width so max hyphen width of a 445px uh, a width of a hundred percent i go ahead and save and i check and now they are side by side but they are too big to fit this particular width so we need to decrease their uh, sizes we will target the div so we'll say a uh, gallery dot thumb list and then remember we added a div for each of the images and this is the div that we'll target here and we'll give it a max width of a 90 px and then we'll also give it a max height of 90 px and also we'll have some margin um, top and bottom will be zero left and right will be 2px dot gallery dot thumb list img and right here we'll give them a width of a hundred percent and then right here we'll have a height and we'll say 100% as well. We'll also give them a touch of a border radius and we'll say 10px. Cursor, because they are clickable, we'll change it to pointer. So this will force them to take the size of the container and we add a border radius and a cursor to be pointer there. And now I think it looks perfect. Look, let's add a hover effect to the image. We'll target the image again so gallery.thumblist.img and we'll add a hover to it and when we hover we'll basically decrease its opacity to 50 percent so as you can see here the opacity of the image is decreased very nice now we target the active class uh, .gallery.thumblist.active and then img and what we'll do to this one by default here opacity will be about 30 percent all we need to do for this one is to add a border 2px solid and we add the color using the variable and we'll say the color is orange border a hyphen radius we don't get suggestion because we missed that one and right here we'll basically say that this is about 13px uh, which I think it's slightly higher than the image here. Right here, you have a margin of zero. I go ahead and save. And now we can see the active image. It's this one. But our border doesn't show. So we misspelled solid. I save. And there we go. We can already see that this is the active one. And this is so nice when I expand. You can see we have that styling like that and you can see the gallery is starting to come along but now whenever we click this we want to switch the main image how will we do that obviously we'll do that using javascript so i think we can jump into javascript and create the functionality for this first i think we can create a different file to separate the logics i'll come to index.html at the very top we had this so i'll duplicate it and you can actually say uh, gallery.js then we create that file so here 
I'll just say gallery.js and this file will have the logic for everything that we'll be doing on our gallery including the lightbox slider that pops up and so on. The first thing that we need to do is uh, whenever we click the thumbnails we need to switch the main image so here i'll say const uh, main images will be equal to a document dot query selector all we specify the class to them so that will be at default then space dot main hyphen img then space then img so that will select all the images that satisfies this okay so it will select all of these and that is what we'll have at our main images and if you want to verify that you can actually go ahead and console.log of main images i save and if you go to the browser and you inspect here go to the console here you'll notice that we have an order list which is like an array of those images let's come here and select all the thumbnails again in a similar manner so we'll say thumbnails will be equal to document dot query selector or and then right here we'll go to dot default we'll go to dot thumb a hyphen list then we select the div okay and that will give us all the thumbnails again now we need to add event listeners to each of those thumbnails so right here this is how we will do it thumbnails dot for each so for each we will basically loop over the thumbnails and uh, right here we pass an arrow function and we will get a thumbnail at a time and i can say thumb and then we'll also get its index and then we can add an event listener to each of them so right here we can say thumb dot add event listener we'll say right here click okay we add the click event listener and right here remember we can add a function that will be called whenever we click it so we add an arrow function just like that we will be calling a function called change image we will be passing the index of that thumbnail so the index is like its position in the node list or in the array and then we'll be passing the main images to this change image we don't have it yet we'll create it in a minute and also we'll pass the thumbnails or the thumbnails like that now we create this change image function we can create it at the top here and we'll say const change image and this will be equal to an arrow function so right here we'll say index we receive the main images and we receive the thumbnails and those are passed right here first of all i remove the active class any active class that exists and because we don't know where it will be at at any time i loop through the main images and also through the thumbnails and i remove the active classes and then i'll add them back at a specific index so let me uh, do that and hopefully it will make more sense so right here i'll say main images dot for each we invoke it here we will get a main image at a time and then for each of the image we make sure that we remove the active class so i'll say img dot class list dot remove i invoke that and i'll say here active so i'll just duplicate that and right here i'll say thumbnails here we'll get a thumbnail at a time so i can say thumb and i remove the active class from each of the thumbnail so no thumbnail will have that active class and now right here we can specify which image was clicked and we show it and also we show the thumbnail that is currently active so right here i'll just say main images and then we specify the index and then right here we'll add now the active class to that specific index so class list dot add we invoke that and we'll say active and we'll do the same for the thumbnail so right here 
we will have our thumbnails and then we'll add the active class to it just like this okay yeah that will actually do it so i save we come back we have this this is the first uh which is active so let's select the second one and look it's like magic it switched to the second image and you can see this thumbnail is now active and why is that because we have specified at that particular index we add the active class to it and at that particular index for the thumbnail we add the active class to it and we remove the active class to all the others so that's basically the logic there and we can now switch between them very confidently and as you can see that section for the default gallery is done uh, so to add this section we'll just do it after our default gallery actually i'll be copying these default gallery because they are so similar all we will do is to add the next and the previous icon and also the x icon and also we'll just make it to pop so what i'll do uh, i'll copy the entire of that section when i hold on shift and click there uh, i highlight and copy right here after that div immediately after that one we paste this other section here here make sure you are on the second one and not the first one we will wrap this with another div okay so here i'll add another div and we will move this section in there so shift then alt top arrow and now that entire section is wrapped with this particular div so i remove the default and right here we will add a class and i'll call this one lightbox so this is basically what they are calling it as you can see active state lightbox so i'll also add that class for the lightbox inside our main image we will add these icons the next the previous the x icon so we need the first icon to be the close icon so icon close this one uh, i select it i highlight everything and i copy i copy it as an svg and then right here i will add a span with a class of icon hyphen close I hit enter and that will create a span with that and in here i'll basically paste that svg we will also have the previous and the next so here i'll have span uh, then dot uh, icon hyphen previous i hit enter and here we'll have our previous then here i'll have span dot icon next icon hyphen next i hit enter and we'll have our next icon so let's just copy paste them right here icon next it's here so i highlight everything copy come here and i'll go ahead and paste it right here where we have icon next we look for icon previous this one i copy and i paste it right here where we have icon previous so i'll go ahead and save so what have we done we have added the three icons that we need we have added the previous next and the close and we also wrapped that section with this light box so that we can differentiate it with the uh, top section there so now i think we just need to dive into the css and we'll start styling this so before our uh, mobile okay after our gallery actually we'll go ahead and we'll say that we are styling the light box we select the light box class to begin with we'll have a display of none but when we click the main image we'll have a display of flex we'll show it basically we'll be adding a class of active dot light box dot active and here is where we'll have a display of flex okay so when we have active we'll have a display of flex let's add that active manually and then we'll be removing it and we'll be making it to be dynamic 
so we add the active class next to this light box like that and now you'll see we have this one with the x and the next and so on okay let's come back and we continue here uh, another thing that we will do we will be positioning it to be absolute we will add a top of zero we will add a left of a zero then we will make it to occupy the entire screen so we'll have a height of 100 vh we'll be having a width of 100 vw very nice then right here we'll add a z index and we'll make this to be about 10 i save now you can see it's at the top here but if we happen to add a background color of red you'll notice that it occupies the entire screen so we don't want to have this background color of red, but we want it to be transparent actually. So I'll add a background and then I'll use var and we'll use our, our black color with opacity. And when I save, you'll notice that now we have that background right there, which is awesome. Now we just need to align this to the center. So align items to the center and we'll also justify the content to the center. And I save so you'll notice that uh, uh, despite that it is still on this side it is not centered uh, horizontally and that is because this image size is too big so we can target the gallery specifically while we are in the uh, light box mode so I'll say uh, right box and then I'll target the gallery so dot gallery and we'll set a max width in here make sure you are in there and we'll say that the max width is 445px and i save and now look it's now at the center so these are not working so we'll need to fix that later on in javascript uh, dot right box and then dot main image and we'll say a position of relative and these will allow us to position the arrows nicely so dot um, light box again then dot uh, icon hyphen previous comma then dot right box and space dot icon hyphen next and we'll style both of them the same way here we'll have a position of absolute we'll add the height to be 60px add the width uh, 60px as well so display flex and we'll align items to the center and we will justify uh, content to the center then we'll also add a background color to the circle to be white so var white just like that when i save you can see we have it right here but it's box we just add a border radius here of 50 percent for it to be a perfect circle and there we go now look both of them are right here so we just need to uh, target uh, each of them and position them correctly. So on hover, we also want to change the cursor to pointer. I'll just say dot icon next and dot uh, icon previous. And right here, we'll just say cursor to be pointer. I'll select dot uh, icon previous and we'll position it top to be 50%. I save and you'll see it right here so we'll say transform and we'll say translate we'll say negative 50 percent and negative 50 percent I save and you can see it's at a perfect position okay and that is what we will do to the icon next so for icon next we'll just do like this and we'll say top again to be 50 percent and when i save you'll notice it's a bit at the bottom here so it's not at the perfect center and that is why we use transform to make it at the perfect center okay so for this one we'll also move it to the right so right to be zero and it will move on this side and then we add a transform to it and we'll say translate then uh, for this one the first value will be 50 percent and that will move it 
um, towards the right. So when I save, you see, it moved it towards the right. But you can see they are not aligned, so we need to move it upward uh, by half its size. So right here, to move it upward, we say negative 50%. And when I save, they are now perfectly aligned. And that is how we can position those two uh, icons. Now we just need to bring this X icon at the top here and that will actually match our design. So how can we do that? We'll just come right here and we'll say dot uh, icon hyphen close. We'll just say position absolute. We'll say right to be zero, top to be negative 40 px. And now we see it right here. We need to change its color. So this is how we can change that icon color. And I'll say dot icon close. We select the SVG and we select the path. And here we'll set the uh, fill value to be var white. I save. And now you'll see that it's white. We will add uh, a cursor to it, cursor to be pointer so that when we hover right here, it points. So we'll just copy this one. And right here, I'll just say full colon hover. And the fill will be orange. And there we go. So when I hover, it's orange. And we just need to fix the JavaScript in this for it to work nicely. So first of all, I'll come to index.html and I'll go ahead and remove the active class and we'll add that dynamically with JavaScript. When we don't have that uh, right box open, this is still working well, very nice. Now let's go to gallery.js and we do our magic. We need to select the main images for the light box and the thumbnail images for the light box. Uh, we can say const uh, right box main images uh, will be equal to document dot query selector or and we invoke these and right here we will now specify that we are taking this from dot uh, light box then space dot main hyphen image uh, then we take the image so notice how we don't add a uh, a dot in front of the image because that is now an element that we are selecting. So I'll just duplicate this and we'll take the light box uh, thumbnails, then document dot query selector all. We go to light box and then thumb list and we take the div. So here we'll say a thumb hyphen list and here we'll take the div. And what we will do, we will map through the light box thumbnails like we did right here. And we add uh, the on click event and we call this change image just with different uh, parameters here. So, what I'll do, I'll just duplicate this for each. But now this one will be for the uh, light box thumbnails. Dot for each, we get a thumbnail at a time, we get the index. We add an event listener to the light box thumbnail. I uh, will add the click event. We call this, but now the difference is here. Instead of passing main images, we'll pass the right box main images. And in instead of passing these thumbnails, we'll pass the right box uh, thumbnails. And that will fix our light box. And the only way to uh, like test that for now is to actually return the active class here. So I will return it, then we'll go to the browser. And when I click this, look, we are able to switch between them. Very nice. Now we, we have this, which is not working. So we need to make that to work. So we come back now to our gallery here. Uh, select our main images. So main images, then we say dot for each and we'll map through them. We will pass an arrow function right here. We'll be able to get the image and the index. And then right here, we will add the event listener to this image. So we'll say img dot add event listener. The event listener that we will add is the click event. 
and here we'll have a function that will be called whenever we click on that image and what we will do is uh, actually to add the uh, active class to the light box so right here i'll say light box uh, dot class list dot add and we will add the active class so we don't have this light box selected so we need to select it first so at the top we need to select that light box so here i'll say const uh, right box will be equal to uh, document dot query selector not all but just query selector and we say uh, light box make sure to include a dot here to specify that that is a class selector we select that we get the light box we add the active class whenever we click on any of the images so let me save and we test so when i come here and i click and it's not uh, actually working uh, i'm not sure why we have messed up maybe with the selector yeah this is light box i save and uh, i think it should work now ah there we go so as you can see we are now able to select when i refresh and i click we are able to see this now there is one problem when we are here and we click uh, we expect to open the same image okay notice how these have the stones but when we click we are still at the first one so how can we fix that so the way to fix that is to just call this change uh, image with the index and the right box main images and right box thumbnail images so that will change the image at the uh, light box because we already have this index remember main images are four so we'll be able to get the index for each of it and whenever we click it we'll be able to change the image at the right box so i save and now uh, when I, we are at this one and i click look it opens exactly there and also the highlighted one is that one and we can continue going to the rest so far so good now let's make these and these and these functional first of all we need to select them so at the top here um let's select them we'll say const icon close will be equal to a document dot query selector and right here we'll select icon a hyphen close we come here we'll have const icon previous we set this to be equal to uh, document dot query selector we invoke that and we'll have uh, icon hyphen previous then right here we will have another const and we'll have icon next will be equal to a uh, document dot query selector and we'll have our dot icon hyphen next very nice so we come here now um we need to know which image we are at at each time and since this change image function is the one that we use to change the image position at each time we can use it to track the index so right here what we'll do we will create a variable and we'll say that the current index uh, be equal to zero and then whenever we change an image we want to record the index that we are currently at so right here we'll just update the current index to be equal to index just like that and for all the times we'll know which index we are at and now when we come to our previous and next icons we'll be able to use that current index to move to the previous image or to move to the next image by either adding one to the index or subtracting one to the index so this is what i mean so we'll have the uh, icon previous to begin with and then we'll say dot add event listener we invoke it we'll have the click event and right here we'll be able to pass an arrow function which will be called uh, when we click on the previous then we'll have an if statement and we'll check is the current index uh, less than or equal to zero so if it is less or equal to zero that means that we have gotten to the end of our thumbnails 
remember they are four so if we are here this is basically zero uh, or less that means that we are at the end okay so we should do something different so if we were here we would subtract one from the index we go here we subtract one from the index we go here and so on but what if we are here we can't subtract one okay so if the current index is less or equal to zero that means that we are at the end here and if we click back we should basically come here okay and that will be the length we subtract one so right here what we will say is to change image we invoke that but the first parameter here is supposed to be the index so the index that will pass is the main images dot length then we subtract one okay and then right here we'll pass the light box main images and also we'll pass the light box uh, thumbnail so that both of them changes according to the index right there now else so here we do a similar thing only that here we'll now subtract from our current index so current index minus one and i save so that previous icon should actually work so if i come here and uh, we click this to open the light box now when i click back look we moved here what happened we took the main images dot length which is four we subtracted one and we passed an index of three therefore so three is this particular image very nice now for next it shouldn't be hard because it's exactly opposite of this one so i'll just paste it here and here we add a click event to next just like that then we'll have click we'll say if the current index is greater or equal to our main images dot length uh, minus one we know the first image will always be at index zero so what we do here we just say index zero then we pass this and this then else right here we'll take the current index and we will add one okay so this check will tell us that we are at the very end so go back to the first image else just continue to the second image and so on so right now when i click here next look we are able to move to the next image when we get to the end we go back to the first image when we are at the first image we try to go to previous we go to the last image so that is working let's work on this close icon so right here i'll just have icon close dot add event listener and right here we'll add the uh, click event then right here i'll have an arrow function which will be called whenever we click on the close icon and what we will do we'll just remove the active class from lightbox so lightbox dot class list dot remove and we invoke that and we say active here very nice now let's remove this dot here because uh, we just need to save that and we save and that will be our javascript for the gallery including the lightbox so when you come here we click we click this close look it closes we open we click it closes we click here we open it open exactly that image we can go to the next we can go to the previous we can close so this is actually a, a good uh, exercise for you to practice your uh, dom knowledge now the next thing that we will do now is uh, before we make this section responsive i think we can complete on this other section right here so next we will work on this other section right here and actually we'll proceed to work on the cut and then we'll make the rest of the page to be mobile responsive so i want us to write the html for this section right here so we had already added um, the heading here that says sinica company and we just need to add the rest so the second one i'll give it a higher priority of h2 and that will say um, for limited edition sneakers and i'll cut that and i'll go ahead and paste it in here also i can remove sneaker company from this so for this one we can give it a class 
I believe this is the name of the product. So I'll say product name. Uh, we'll add a paragraph and we'll give it a class of a product hyphen description. So I can use desk. We will have these up to where we have offer. So we will cut that and we will include it right there. Now, after the P tag, we have right here where we have some prices. So we have the price, the previous price down here, the, the discount percentage. So we will create a div. We can say that this is price information. So I'll say class price hyphen info. We'll have the first div and we'll just say here that this is the price. We will include two spans right here. So span, then also we'll have another span here. And for the first one, we will have the actual price of the product. So a dollar sign 125.00. Then right here, we'll have the discount percentage, which is 50%. We'll give individual classes and I'll say that this is the current hyphen price. And for this one, I'll give it a class and I'll say that this is the discount. So after this price, I'll come here and I'll add another div with a class of previous hyphen price. And in here, we'll say 250.00. Then we need to include the Dora sign and that will be it. We move on to these buttons. So after our price information, we will come here. We will create a div with a class of add hyphen to hyphen cut hyphen container. So I'm just uh, categorizing all these buttons into this one class uh, and then in here, we we'll have the counter where we can either increase or decrease the uh, quantity. We'll have a div with a class of counter. And in here, we will have a button dot minus. So that will decrement the count. And we need to include the SVG for that. So let's go to our Fire Explorer here. And we look for that icon icon minus so we take this as vg control a control copy then we come back to html and we include it inside here inside this button we will have a span with a class of count so i'll say span dot count and right here i'll say zero that will be the default then we proceed down here and we'll have another button now with a class of plus this will increment the count so we look for SVG for that plus icon. So icon plus. Highlight everything, we copy, and we paste it right here. And uh, after the counter, you can always right click counter and you'll see the line that is highlighted. You see where it ends. So button, div, after that div right here, we'll now have this button that says add to cut. So right here, I'll say button, then dot, add hyphen to hyphen cut, hit enter. In here, uh, we will have two things. We'll have a span. This will hold the cut SVG. So let's look for icon cut. I write everything, uh, copy, and we paste it just right there. And then after the span here, we'll have another span. These will have add to cut text, just like that. So now we have the HTML added for this section. We can style that section now using CSS. So you can see our section is here. We need to style it with CSS so that it looks nice. And then we'll come to this functionality of adding a product to cut uh, using JavaScript. I'll open the CSS file. So here we had this content. We had added a flex of one. So let's target individual elements dot content h3 
and we'll add a font size of uh, 16 px we'll add a color these will make use of variable and we'll say orange then let's target the h2 so i'll say dot content h2 we'll add a font size and we'll say that this is that 7px we'll have a margin top margin will be 20px right will be zero uh, bottom will be 40px then left will be zero i save and you can see it's starting to come along i'll target the paragraph here so i'll say dot content p okay we will use a font size here of 16 px then we'll have a color of var uh, dark grayish blue i'll add margin to the bottom of about uh, 30 px now we go on to these prices a uh, dot price we'll say display to be flex then we'll align items to the center and we'll have a gap of 15 px so that is these and the discount let's target the current price i'll just say dot current hyphen price we'll add a font hyphen weight of 700 and i'll add a font size of 25px and that will make it to be big we target the discount so right here we'll just say dot discount and we'll display frex then we'll align items to the center we'll justify content to the center so you want it to have that you know like a badge or something uh, which is orange so we'll add a padding of uh, zero top and bottom left right will be 6px and then right here we'll have a border uh, radius of 10 percent very nice we come right here we'll add a height and we'll say 25px and we'll add a background color and we'll say var uh, pale orange then i'll come right here and i'll add a font weight and i'll say 700 then i'll come here and i'll have a color of orange so we need to say var orange and as you can see we have that discounted design right there very nice so i proceed down here and i'll target the uh, previous price so I'll say dot previous hyphen uh, price will have a margin top 10 px right zero bottom that 5 px left zero that will create some distance between it and other elements and then we'll come right here and we'll change its font hyphen size and we'll say that it's 18 px then we'll change its color and i'll say var that it's grayish blue and we'll have a font weight and we'll say 700 we'll have a text decoration and we'll say line through and there we go this is the previous price very nice we move on to this section where we have add to cut we'll target add hyphen to cut container and right here we'll display flex then we'll align items to the center then we will have a gap of 15 px and i save now they are side by side there so we target the counter and to make it look good so right here i'll just say dot counter we'll display frex 
then we'll justify content to be space between we'll align items to the center we can add a border radius of 15 px we can add a width 150 px we can add a height of 55 px so when i save um, you can see it's now widespread but we need to also include a background color here and we'll say var light grayish blue and uh, it's there i know it's not that clear so we'll target individual buttons to make it look much much better so let's just come here and say dot counter button then right here we have a width and i'll say that the width here is 50px for each of the button the height for each of the button let it be a hundred percent then the cursor for each of the button will be pointer then we proceed here and we'll display flex we make sure that the icons for the buttons are at the center that is the plus and the minus icon so to do that we can make use of flex box we display flex we align items to the center we justify content to the center ah, very nice then we proceed right here and we'll set the background to none i continue and i'll set a border and i'll set it to none as well and i'll go ahead and save and look it looks much better let's make this count here to be bold so we target the counter so dot counter okay we target the count and we'll just set the font weight to be 700 which is bold and there we go let's target this button here for add to cut and i'll say dot add hyphen to hyphen cut we'll add a, a color here to be var white then we'll have a background color of var orange and when i save you can see the change so we need to remove that uh, black border change the color of the icon here and uh, position all of them at the center so yeah let's do that so here i think we can set the border to none that will remove the border then we'll give it a height of 55px we'll give it a width of a hundred percent we will have a border radius and we'll set the border radius to be 10px we'll come right here and have a font weight and that will be 700 and so far you can see the bot the button is coming along we need to center everything so we'll display uh, flex align item center okay i save we need to add a gap between this icon and the text so we say gap will be 15 px another thing we can add is the cursor of pointer and you can add a padding so zero and then 5px left right and look our button is already looking good we just need to change the color of this icon we can target that svg we can just say dot add to cut svg path and we'll fill with var white and it's already good very nice very nice and that is the design for that section and on full screen it looks like that the links have the hover effect we have these we have the light box working and everything looks good now the next thing that we need to do is to work on our cut to add a product cut to remove a product from cut also we need to work on our counter here to increment quantity decrement quantity 
and uh, what else will make the entire application to be mobile responsive so those are uh, the steps that remains so i think we can start by creating the cart here whenever we click here we will show the cart so let's write html markup for the cart container and we will go back to html then we will move to the very top up to where we had cut and here we have the cut then after this image we will be adding a div with a class of cut hyphen container then inside this div we will have a div with a class of cut hyphen title and we'll say cut right there we'll have another div we'll say cut hyphen items and then dot empty so that is a div with a class of cut items and empty so when our cart doesn't have any product it will be empty and it will be empty by default so we make sure to add that right there okay and when it's empty we'll be having a paragraph and this paragraph will say your cart is empty and right here we can add a class and we'll say cut hyphen empty after the cut items we will have a button and this button will say check out and then right here we'll have uh, a class that will say check out and also will say empty so when it's empty we'll hide this button so this is the cut container with javascript we'll be able to add elements dynamically inside our cart items div and we'll be able to remove this or hide it whenever we have some items in there so if i save you'll already see some stuff here we'll also be having a count at the top here and we can add the html for it so after this cart container we will come here and uh, we will add a div with a class of cart hyphen count we will have a span with a class of qty so span dot qty and right here we will just say zero to begin with and i save now we can design this to look much better with css so um before our mobile we can just add a class here of cut not a class but a comment so that we know where we are at it's easier for you to follow that way so first things first we will make the position of this cut icon to be relative and then this one will be absolute to that particular cut icon we will make like the parent here to be relative that involves that cut icon then we'll make this cut container to be absolute and then this cut count to be absolute so these will remain relative so right here i'll just say dot cut and i'll have a position here of relative not padding but position relative that is all we need to do we can target this cut icon so that it's a pointer whenever we hover over it so i'll say dot cut a hyphen icon and i'll just say uh, cursor pointer i save and when we hover now it's a pointer very nice okay we proceed here let's now target the cut container i uh, will say that the position for this one it's absolute so now it will be absolute to this and we can be able to position it nicely now so right here we can give it a background and we'll save our white we'll say right will be negative 95 px top will be uh, 50 px we need uh, some form of shadow a box shadow and we can just google box shadow generator box shadow like this or css box shadow and you'll get some generators right here and i'll use this one css scan where we have example of box shadow 
and I'll just choose one of them. I'll go with the first one. I'll copy when I click it copies. And now when I go back to my code right here and I happen to paste here and save, you'll notice that now we have a box shadow around our cart container, which is nice. Let's proceed here and we can give this now a width of 360 px. We will set a mean hyphen height and we'll set this to be 260 px. We will show it when it's active. Okay, whenever we click our cut here is when we'll make it active. So here, uh, by default, we'll be having a display of none. So we don't see it. But once we add an active class, we'll say something like dot cut container, then dot active, and we'll be giving it a display of flex so since we don't have this active class we don't see it but we can add it manually for designing purposes so right here i'll just say active and once i add that active you'll notice that it now shows now we come back here and we design using that active class we'll have display of flex and then here we will flex direction to be column I'll come right here and I'll design the title. So I'll say cut hyphen title and we'll add a padding around it of 25px, 20px. So 25 will be top and bottom, 20 will be left, right. Then we'll have a font weight for that and we'll say that it's 700. Right here, we'll have a border to the bottom and we'll set it to be 1px solid then we'll give it a color so we'll use variable a uh, grayish blue and look we now have a title for the cut then you have this underline there and we are now to this second section let's style this part where we'll be having our cut items and where it says your cut is empty to design that part we'll have our cut then we'll target the cut uh, hyphen items we'll have a padding and right here, I'll just say 25px, then we'll have 20px. Right here, we'll display flex, and we'll proceed down here, and we'll change the flex direction to be column. Right here, we'll add a gap, and we'll say 25px. And already when I save, we get some nice spacing. So we need to style when the cut is empty. So I'll say um, dot cut and I'll say dot cut hyphen items uh, dot empty and we'll say dot cut hyphen empty. So did we add a class to that P tag? Yes, we did. So we are targeting this P tag just like that. And here we'll add the color to be a variable of grayish blue and we'll say display to be inline block we'll have dot cut then dot cut hyphen items and here we'll have dot empty so when it's empty we will align the items to the center just like that and also we can justify content to the center we can give it a certain height of 187 or 85 px and also we'll set a font weight of 700 so when it's empty we'll have it like that your cut is empty now down here if we have dot cut and we have dot cut uh, hyphen items then space dot cut hyphen empty we will display none so this is for the case when we have some cut items so when we have some cut items we will hide this paragraph but when we get to have some cut items we will be able to show it we will say display inline block and for it to make more sense, I think this can be up here. So we'll say dot checkout right here. We'll give it a height of 
56 px just like that then we'll give it a margin and we'll say 27 uh, px and 23 px so we have our button there very nice we proceed down here i uh, will remove the border don't need the border and then we'll give it a background color a nice touch of the color here and reset the color to orange and then right here we will um, change the color to white so color here will be white we'll also have a border radius and we'll set the border radius to be 10 px then we'll have a font weight of 700 and look that button looks good uh, on hoover we'll change the cursor pointer so right here dot checkout uh, hoover and we'll change the cursor to pointer now remember this button will only show when we have items in the cart so when we don't have items in the cart we'll be adding an empty class to it and we'll say checkout dot empty so when we have this class we don't want to see this button and we will say display display none so by default we will hide it and we'll have this section by default just the heading and your cut is empty so we'll see how these empty classes will come along as we work with our javascript we need to uh, design the cut count which will show at the top here so let's target that this zero here so let's target it we'll say dot cut hyphen count here we'll have a cursor or pointer position will be absolute uh, we'll have a top of negative 8 px we'll have a right of negative 10 px we'll have a background color of orange we'll have a color and then right here we need to give it a height a width so we can just say a mean width or uh, okay let's add to the mean height here of 17 px we'll also be having a mean hyphen width of uh, 25 px then we'll have a border uh, hyphen radius and these will be 10 px and you can see it's starting to come along only that that zero is not nicely uh, positioned so we will display flex then we'll just center it we will align items to the center and we will justify content to the center very nice let's save and now it's at the center let's reduce that font size it's too big so font size here will be about 12 px and also let's make it to be bolder so we'll say font hyphen weight to be 700 and there we go our count cut count is there so we have completed the basic design for our cut it looks like that and if you check the design it is almost so similar to that one it might not be perfect but it is close so basket empty this is the design doesn't it look like that right okay this is for mobile uh, basket field so this is when we have a product we will have the button there okay very nice then when it's empty it will look like this and i think this is what we have right here almost that actually so it's not exactly the same because for example you'll see this is stretching all the way to outside our profile but for my case i just made it to be just there at the border you can push it further but i did this so that it is generally responsive and i don't have to have a lot of breakpoints but uh, it's also possible to have it like this anyway it's, it is near there so the next thing now is to see how can we add a product to this cut 
So the first thing is to start with our counter here. We will get our elements through JavaScript. So let's open the JavaScript file. And uh, as you can see, we were categorizing them. This was for gallery. This was main, where we just did the navbar. Uh, now I'll just add a new JavaScript file and we can call it cut.js. So here I'll say cut.js and we should link this file in our HTML. So we go to the top, we just duplicate one of these and we link these to our cut. Now we come to cut.js, we'll say count element will be equal to, we should declare this as a constant, document.querySelector, we invoke it and here we'll say dot count, we'll say const minus will be equal to document and then here dot query selector we invoke it and here I'll say dot minus I'll just duplicate that line and we'll call this one plus document dot query selector plus okay very nice now we move on down here we will create a variable of our count and we'll say let count be equal to zero we'll come right here and we will create a function that uh, will be updating our value here and also it will be updating our dom we'll say const uh, update count will be equal to an arrow function this will be receiving a new count each time and here we'll say count will be equal to new count then down here we will be updating the DOM. So we will take our count element and we will change its text uh, content. So here text content, we'll set it to count. Remember here count is already updated. So how will we call this particular function? We'll call this function whenever we click on minus or plus. So let's add event listeners to minus and plus. We'll say minus dot add event listener and we are listening to the click event. And then right here, we will have an arrow function. And in here, we'll say if our count uh, is greater than zero, that is when we will call our update count and we will pass count minus one. Else we will not be, you know, going below zero will just remain as zero so we'll do a similar thing for plus right here we add a click event to our plus button just like that we will not do any check so we can move this up there and remove the if statement and for plus we'll just be adding one and now when i click on plus look it updates to one when i click minus it decreases and the end is zero so what happens when I click plus, the plus button has an event listener, so it will listen to click event. This function gets called. We call our update count. We take the current count. Right now the current count is three. So when I click, we will take three plus one, which is four. And that will be passed as our new count. We update this variable to four now. And then we update the text content with four. We update this uh, span right there. And that is it for our counter. We move to our cut here. The first thing is whenever we click on this cut, I want us to open cut. Now we can target the cut icon. So I'll say const cut icon will be equal to uh, document dot query selector. We invoke it will say dot cut hyphen icon so all we need to do is to come here and we'll add an event listener to the cut icon so cut icon dot add event listener of click and then right here we will pass an arrow function actually we should select the cut container okay remember at our cut container is where we were adding an active class you see, this is why we have cut container and we were adding an active class so that we show it. So if we come to index.html file, 
we look for cut container where we had our nav bar you will see that we had already manually added active class so i'll just remove it and then we'll use javascript to add it and when i remove the active class that cut is hidden so here let's first select it i'll just duplicate this one and i'll say that this is the cut container okay then here we'll have cut hyphen uh, container then we come down here once we add an event listener to the cut icon whenever we click we add the active class to the cut container so here i'll say cut container dot class list dot add uh, actually we will do a toggle we have add remove but we can also do a toggle and a toggle will add or remove it depending on whether it's already there or not so here i'll say active we toggle class active and i save so now whenever i click uh okay it should open but it's not so something is uh wrong uh, let's see what is wrong um Oh, okay, I see what is wrong. I was clicking this number there, uh, which doesn't open or close it. But when we click the cut icon here, it actually works. I think we should also do the same whenever we click on this particular icon. So I'll duplicate that line and I'll say that this is the cut count. So that is this retro badge right there then its class was cut count right here and i duplicate this and here i'll simply say uh, cut count so whenever we click both the cut icon and the cut count we are uh, toggling the active class so when i click on this one now yeah it opens and closes so that's a good step there the next step will be to add an item to the cart let's first select some elements we can select add to cart button this one and i think duplicating this is much easier we'll go a bit fast so here i'll say add a to cart btn then document dot query selector here we'll say add hyphen to hyphen cut very nice then i duplicate it again so this is for the button this one then i'll select the cut items which is a container for our cut items cut items and here the class was cut items we select the checkout button i'll say check out and here we'll say checkout let's see how we can add an item to cut we come down here we will have add to cut button and we will add an event listener of click event we'll pass an arrow function and this is the function that will be called whenever we click on add to cut button first of all we check if we have some count so we'll check if count is equal to zero if we don't have any count we will immediately return so nothing will happen and that count is this one right here so if we don't have anything we will not add that to cut and the count we kept it in a variable right here okay so we check that count and if it's not there we just return then right here i want us to get the product information i uh, will have const product name and these will be equal to a document dot query selector we select that particular product dot main then we select the element that had the product name and we gave it a class of a product hyphen name and from these we will be able to get the text content so right here i'll say dot text content and right here if you go ahead and you do a console log of this product name you'll see that we are able to get it so we'll get this h2 then when we specify content we will get the name okay 
So right here, if we just uh, inspect and we go to console, we click add to cart. Uh, okay, nothing happens. Why? Okay, the issue is when I click, this is zero, so it does not uh, proceed to execute the code below here. But if we have one, then we click add to cart, we actually get the product name. So uh, for a moment I was wondering what's wrong, but it's fine. So as you can see, we are able to get the product name like that. So we'll get some more information about the product in a similar way. So right here, I'll just say const, let's say product price, and first of all, we'll get the element. Remember the price has that dollar sign. So let's first get the element and we'll set this to be equal to a document a dot query selector. Then right here, we'll say dot main and dot current uh, hyphen price. I want us to remove the dollar sign and this is how we will do it. So right here, we'll now have const product price uh, to be equal to document okay not a document but uh, we will say pass fruit which is a function and we will invoke it we will say a product price element and right here we'll say dot text content dot replace this is a string method so we will replace the dollar sign with nothing okay this should be inside quotes just like that now here we will get the product image so i'll say const uh, product img will be equal to document so what we'll get from here is the url of the image so we'll get first the image so document.query selector and that will be at our default we will get the first image of the gallery so dot default dot gallery dot main uh, hyphen img then img that will get the image then right here we have another method called get attribute and that will get a certain attribute of our image and we will specify that we want the slc attribute and that will give us the link of that particular image now right here we will add item to cut so we will create a function that will help us to add the item to cut this function will accept the product information that includes our product name then it will be able to receive our product price and also it will receive our product image like that okay and then right here we will go ahead and open the cart okay whenever we add item to cart we'll go ahead and open the cart so we'll take the cart container and we'll say dot class list and we'll add the active class okay then right here we will go ahead and update our account whenever we successfully add the item to cart we'll go ahead and uh, remove the count so here we will say update count and we will reset it to zero and i save so this is our cut button whenever we click it we will do all this first of all we get product information then we call this add to cut which will receive the name the price and the uh, product image then we open our cut and then right here we will reset the count okay very nice now the next thing is to create this particular function and we'll say const add item to cut this will be an arrow function like that so this arrow function will receive the product name it will receive the uh, product price and also it will receive the product uh, image src so i can say img src uh, we will calculate the total price const total price will be equal to our price we multiply by the count remember we were already keeping a record of the count at the top here now right here i will create a cut item we'll have a const of cut item and this is how we can create an element using javascript 
we will say document dot create element we invoke it and we specify which element we are creating so i'll create a div element there and first of all we can attach a class to this cut item so this is how we can attach the class cut item dot class list dot add so you already know this one and we'll attach a class of a uh, cut hyphen item very nice now we proceed down here we will attach the quantity of this particular item to our cut item so and we will use a custom attribute which we will call quantity so to set a custom attribute we'll just say cut item and then dot data set so data set will allow us to set a custom attribute and here we will call our attribute as quantity and then we will set that to be equal to count so at our cut item we'll be having this particular attribute which will hold the count of our item so what we will do here we'll say cut item and we'll say dot inner html will be equal to here use a back tick so back tick is a character that is uh, you know just before the one number one on your keyboard so the back tick looks like that and this will allow us to create a template for our item right here uh, and here you need to be you know keen with the sparing because there is no auto correction or anything so be careful right here when right typing it out so here we'll have the image to begin with this image will have an src attribute and we will be able to pass to it the image src so here i'll use some double quotes like that and then right here we will read the uh, image src from this particular variable and this is how you can read it use the dollar sign then the curry brackets then right here you pass the image src so that way we have set the image src uh, for this particular image then you can give it an alt name and we'll set this to be equal to the name so i'll use some double quotes and then right here dollar sign curly brackets then i'll pass name if i come down here and we say uh, cut items dot append child like that we invoke that and we pass our cut item like that we shall already see our cut item being added to the cut but it will only have the image because that is what we have included in its inner html so let's test this first and see if it works so back here we add one then click add to cut okay we have an error add a item to cut is not defined so here we missed the sparing make sure the sparing for this and this function are the same let's come back let's test it again we add one add and look we have this image showing up because it is now inside our cut items and if you happen to inspect it you can inspect the html here and you'll notice that inside our cut items the div that have cut items we have the p tag still which is uh, saying empty but we also have this cut item which was added it has a class of cut item it have a data quantity uh, which is a custom attribute that we created uh, and it have a value of one and then inside that that cut item we have this particular image which we have added dynamically we just need to add all the other elements of this particular cut item that includes the name the price and so on so we just need to proceed right here we will create a div these will be having a closing div as well i hit enter and inside this div we'll be having the name of the item so i'll say div again we use the dollar sign to read the name of the product so this will hold the name of the product we'll have a div another one that will have our prices inside this div we will have a paragraph and inside this paragraph um we will show the price the count 
and the total price so let's start with the price so i'll say two dollar sign one dollar sign will be shown on our you know our ui and then the other dollar sign will help us to read the price so here i'll say price uh, dot to fixed to so that will ensure that the decimal points are just two of them at the end here we will say x and then here we will read the count so here i'll say count so it will be something like two hundred dollars times two like you know maybe there are two of them and then we show the total price next so right here we will have a span make sure you are doing it correctly then for this span we will show uh, the total price so we'll say total price then dot two fixed we invoke it and we say two we'll be having a class to it and we'll set it to be equal to right here we'll say total uh, hyphen price so as you can see we have added the name we have added price and then we have added the total price so if you go to basket field you'll notice that we have the the name then we have the price multiplied by the count then we have the total price then we had the image as the first one and then the last one will be this particular button for deleting the uh, product from cut so we need to add that button now i will have the button after this div here okay so here we have how many divs we have this div for name we have this div for price then we have this entire div and we can say that this entire div have a class so that we are able to style it and we'll say uh, item hyphen details okay and then at the end now at the very end before closing our back tick we will be having a button now okay this button will have a class to be equal to delete hyphen item then we need to add its content which is the delete svg so we go and look for that particular svg we come to images icon delete copy it and we'll paste it in here so i save so that will be our item so let's tell this cut item and i'll just say right here dot cut hyphen item and we'll display flex we will align items to the center and we'll add a gap of 20 px we will decrease the size of the image so i'll say dot cut hyphen item actually let's make sure we also say img there we will set the height of the image to be 50 px we'll have a border hyphen radius of 5 px so let's add an item and look we are already having something we have the image reduced then we have this text content where we have um, the price multiplied by two then these then we have this delete button and as you can see this is actually starting to come along very nice here we said cut item we can also say here that the color for everything will be var and we'll say a uh, dark grayish blue let's select the total price i'll just say dot uh, cut hyphen item dot total uh, hyphen price we will change the color for this one to be more visible so we'll say var black and we'll also increase its font weight for it to look bold so font weight to be 700 i save and now this is much more visible okay very nice let's go back to javascript and we'll complete these logics so uh, we created the cut item there we added its inner html and we appended it to our cut items so right here i want us to remove the uh, empty class so that this your cut is empty doesn't show so how we will do that right here i'll just say if our cut items dot uh, class list dot contains and we say empty uh, we will go ahead and we'll say uh, cut items dot 
class list then dot remove and we will remove the empty class so if it's there we remove it since we already now have an item in our cart and also we'll say checkout dot class list uh, dot remove and we will remove the empty class and the checkout is the checkout button and once we remove the empty class from the checkout button that button will show down here and when we remove the empty class from the cart items it will remove this there right here i hope that makes sense so i save and let's add an item okay i said here remover which is an error so let's make sure we don't get that error so here i remove that one i save i think that error is preventing javascript from uh, running further and showing us our card so yeah there we go and the style is perfect we see the checkout we don't see the you know your cart is empty text and we have our cart item right here we need to also update our total cart uh, quantity so for that right here we'll be calling a function and we'll call this function update uh, total qty and we invoke that we'll come to the top here and let's add a variable for our total cart quantity so I'll say let total qty be equal to zero. Then we will create this function update total qty. Uh, I can do it just above our add item to cut. So right here I'll say const update total qty. This will be equal to an arrow function. Uh, we will have const cut item uh, okay items list and we'll set this to be equal to document uh, dot query selector all and right here i'll say cart hyphen item so this will get a node list of our cart items okay remember the node list look like an array okay and it have uh it have a length right if we log it to the console we come back here and let's add that one you see we get a node list of our items and you see it have a length because it is in form of an array if i add two more you see we get two items so these and these uh, we have this one and when i hover it can actually show and we have this one but for each of them this is has a quantity of one this has a quantity of two so uh, we should be able to you know uh, calculate the total quantity which is these plus these so what we will do we will map through our items and then we will get the total quantity and update our variable up there so right here first of all we will reset our quantity to zero and then we will calculate afresh each time so here we'll have cut uh, items list and we'll have dot for each which is an array method to go through each item and we pass an arrow function right here like that then here we get an item at a time and in here we can do some uh, calculations we'll take the total uh, quantity which is our total cut quantity uh, then we'll say plus is equals we'll say pass int and right here we'll say item dot data set dot quantity so we'll go through each of the item we'll take its count and we'll add it to our total uh, quantity once it gives us the total we will take our cart count dot inner html and we will pass right here a span we include the back ticks the character just before your one then we include the span element we'll say that the value of this span is our total quantity then right here uh, we can just give it a class of qty and i save so let's see if it updates our count look it updates to one if we had two they are now three so that is how you can update the total cut quantity right there 
and this is how you can add the items and uh, the next step that we should do is to remove an item from cart at our add item to cart uh, remember we constructed everything to do with the cart item including images the image details the name the price the button and still in here is where we will be able to add an event listener to the delete button to remove an item from cart so after this if statement right here uh, before you close you'll have right here uh, attach an event uh, listener to the to the delete button to remove an item from cart okay so right here we'll say const delete button will be equal to cut item dot query selector we invoke that and we pass the class for the delete button which we included here this particular class so i can even copy that and i'll pass it here make sure it begins with a dot to specify that that is a class so that will give us that delete button then right here we'll just say uh, delete button dot add event listener we invoke it we will add the click event and then right here we'll go ahead and we'll pass an arrow function this button since it's a button it will be having an event okay and we'll use this event to get the class name for this particular item we'll say const cut uh, item will be equal to we take our event then dot target then we have a property called a uh, closest so we'll say closest like that and then we invoke that and right here we'll say dot cut hyphen item and this will take the closest cut item uh, which means it will take the the class name of the parent so this is our delete button and its parent is this particular cut item so it will take this particular cut item so we take that particular cut item and we remove it uh, remove item from cut and we'll pass our cut item we don't have this function defined so let's define it remove item from cut I can do it above our add item to cart right here and i'll say const remove item from cart will be equal to we will take our cart item and then right here we will take the cart item and we'll say dot remove so it have a method that will automatically delete it and then right here we'll say update total uh, quantity and we call it so this update total quantity is the one that we created at the top here and this will now take the cut item list again and it will notice that one is not there go through the ones that remains calculate the total quantity and it will update our total cut quantity so we update the total cut quantity once we remove so this is not remover but remove we'll say if our cut items dot children and then here dot rent is equals is equals is equals to one that means that we were we are at the last one uh, the one that we are removing so once we remove the last one we want to add the empty classes so i'll say cut items dot class list and then dot add and we will add our empty class and this will return the design for an empty cut so also here we'll say checkout dot class list dot add and we'll say empty and this as well we'll uh, remove that button for checkout when the cut is empty so we perform this check to return the empty class so that the style is okay whenever we don't have any item in our cut so I go ahead and save we can test all this we add an item to cut to all one the cut opens then we have this the total quantity is working 
we add 3, we add, and it's here. It's 4. Let's remove this one. I click, and it's removed, and we remain with this one. The total quantity is updated. Very nice. We remove the last one, and the classes are applied. The empty classes here are applied, and the design goes back to this one, which is an empty cut. So this is working like magic. So one last thing that we can do on this one is to design this button so that it looks much better, the delete button. So we'll jump into CSS. I think we missed that one. I'll say dot delete a hyphen item. And right here, we'll remove the border so it will be none. Then we'll have a background of none and we'll set the cursor pointer and I save. Now, if we check it, it's much better just like that. And it's working. Very nice. Now, we have completed working on our cart. We completed working on the gallery, the right box. And I hope you have been learning stuff, especially JavaScript. These project test your JavaScript so much, which is uh, really awesome. And I have given you a step-by-step -step guide on how you can go about it. The last thing that we'll do on this particular project is to make this page to be mobile responsive. So if we go to mobile mode, we had added this side nav, which works, but everything else is not working as it should. So next, let's complete the mobile responsiveness. So at mobile uh, responsiveness, where we had this comment, just go to the very bottom after this one. Right here, we can say that we are now at the main and we will target dot main class. We will change the flex direction into a column. And as you can see already that changes a lot. Very nice. I'll say uh, dot main default and we'll hide it. So that is the default gallery. So it will display none, okay that will hide the default gallery and then uh, right here we will instead show the light box so right here say dot light box we will display flex so that will show it just like that then we will change some of its properties for example we will change the position from absolute to relative and that will make it to occupy the space instead of being uh, on top of other elements okay now i come here we will add a height of auto a width of auto and we will set the background to none already we can see we don't have the background we have changed the height and the width and it's now fitting at this location our switches here still works but we don't need to have this so if you check at the mobile design we don't have these right here okay so we will remove those so how do we remove them we'll just say dot main and then dot bump list and we'll display none and they are gone then i come right here we target the uh, icon previous or previous icon so i'll say dot main and then dot uh, icon hyphen previous and here i'll say left will be 50 px so it will be inside the image then the height for this one we will decrease its size so we'll decrease the height and also we will decrease the width to be 45 px and you can see now it's inside the image and it's smaller in size. We'll do a similar thing for next icon. So right here, I'll just say dot main and dot icon hyphen next. For this one, we'll have a rate of 50 px and then we'll have a height uh, of 45 px and we'll have a width of 45 px. And now also the next icon is in there. Very nice. Let's uh, target the image. 
the active image so let's say dot gallery then dot main hyphen img and img dot active that is the active image and we'll set its max uh, hyphen width and we'll say none then we'll set the max uh, hyphen height to none as well and then right here i'll just say let the width be a hundred percent so it will occupy the entire screen and uh, it doesn't let's set the height to be outer right here we can remove the border radius so border radius will be zero so let's change the width from 100 percent to 100 vw 100 percent doesn't seem to work so 100 vw and uh, i think that is what we want for mobile then we can switch between the images using the slider just like that so we don't want these so right here that spacing is too much we'll just target the content and what we'll say is um, padding top and bottom to be zero left and right to be 20 px and i save uh, that padding is still there so main main had a gap so i think that is the one that we should be targeting right here we said flex column uh, we should have added a gap of 20 px to decrease that gap and that works very nice then we remove the padding around it so we set padding to zero and uh, we now have much more spacing just like that very nice so we come here let's target the h2 i'll say dot um, content and right here i'll set a margin of 10 px and zero then right here I'll have a font size of 30 px so that will decrease the heading we can target the prices here so right here i'll say dot uh, price dot info and we'll display flex we'll justify content to be space between and that uh, i think it should push this price at the end there did we have that class to begin with let's check out the prices we had yes we had price info then we had this and this so price hyphen info okay this is hyphen that is why it's not working okay there we go and it's pushed then there very nice so let's come here and we are in the items at the center and right here we have margin bottom of that px right here i'll select the previous price and i will set the margin to be zero and now they are nicely aligned so we we have one issue where we don't see the you know add to cart and counter and so on you can choose the different iphones here okay here we are seeing them but for iphone 12 we are also seeing them so what happened there why were we not seeing them before we are seeing them now even if it's a uh, shorter so that's we had so i think i'll go with iphone 14 pro max there then we will style them correctly okay so right here i'll say dot add to cut container and i'll change the flex hyphen direction to column they are there we need this to stretch so here i'll say dot counter and we'll give it a width of 100 percent and it stretches all the way after the counter we can select the counter button so i'll say dot uh, counter then button so one thing you'll notice is that when i 
I'm here and click or here and click nothing happens not unless I come to the very plus here and here so we'll just make the buttons to be bigger so here I'll just say let the width of the button be about 40 percent so that even if I click just here it works it's bigger so that's it and then here I'll just have a dot cut container and we'll have a z hyphen index and I'll say 20 then I'll have a right and I'll say negative 85 px and I'll have a top and I'll say 40 px so that cut container is when this opens okay there is still weird thing happening here the overflow we have an overflow here which uh, which I don't think I'll cover you can try and see how you can fix it so generally I have shown you how to make use of JavaScript to create this uh, design uh, especially these right here working with the cut you have also learned some HTML CSS uh, which is really awesome if you enjoyed my content uh, please make sure to support the channel by subscribing liking and sharing and i will see you on the next one